Hi and welcome back. Today we're gonna have a look at the ADAC 506 Voltage Controlled Stochastic Function Generator. An extremely powerful and creative signal processor and generator with pretty much endless possibilities. In this video, I'll explain the concept of the module, then I'll go over its features, and then we'll dive into a series of patches. If you'd like to support this video series, or you want to get access to the PDF sheets of the illustrations I use in this and many of my other videos, have a look at my Patreon. As always, you can use the timeline to navigate to specific sections. But now, let's dive right in. Function generators are extremely powerful tools in modular land. And although the name doesn't mention it, the ADAC 506 is in fact a quad function generator. Looking at the front panel, the four function generators are labeled envelope 1 to 4, but any of those can be used individually as LFO, drone source, slew limiter, trigger delay, attenuverter, offset generator, rudimentary filter or VCA, as well as envelopes, and a lot more. Rise time and fall time are the two core parameters used to control a function generator. Depending on how and with what input signal the module is used, these two parameters have a different effect. For example, if you use a function generator as a looping envelope or LFO, the rise and fall time control both the shape as well as the frequency of the looping shape. Used as a triggered envelope, rise and fall set the attack and decay stage of an envelope and used as a gated envelope, rise and fall, set the attack and release. When a function generator is used to process incoming voltages, like a sample and hold signal or a 1 volt per octave signal, rise and fall act as a slew limiter for increasing and decreasing voltages. When I go over the features of the module and the patches, I'll touch on a lot more uses. But first, let's have a look at what makes this function generator stochastic. Simply put, it means that it has a built-in random generator that can create variations to the rise and fall values without any external input. To give you full control over this, the ADAC 506 gives you two parameters for both the rise as well as the fall time, a maximum and minimum setting. With the max setting at zero, the minimum setting determines the rise or fall time like it would on any ordinary function generator. The value set this way will stay the same. However, when you increase the max setting to a value above the minimum setting, you set a range between these settings. Every time the rise or fall stage of a function generator sets in, the module uses a random value between the set minimum and maximum values. This allows for everything between subtle movement within a predictable framework, for example a subtle random variation in the decay of a triggered envelope, all the way to pretty extreme randomness. For example, when used in looping mode, with min and max values set really far apart. The ADAC 506 is a quad stochastic function generator. And as you can see from the front panel, it's packed with jacks, knobs and switches. This makes it look pretty daunting at first, but it gets a lot more easy to grasp if we break it down into different sections. Most noticeable are the four white knobs. Let's have a look at these first. The four main knobs control the maximum and minimum value for the rise and fall time. Each value can be controlled with an external control voltage at the bottom, and each of those inputs has its own bipolar attenuator for maximum control over incoming CV. All four function generators share these core settings, but you have extensive control over each channel within these settings. And if you like, you can set the value for each of them individually as well. The settings and in and outputs for the channels take up most of the front panel, but all four are identical, so let's isolate the functions of a single one. Starting from top to bottom, there's a control for the response curve, from linear to logarithmic. The amplitude control is effectively an attenuverter for the output of the channel. For example, if you use it as a looping envelope, you can determine the strength of the output signal and even invert it. But it also works on processed bipolar incoming voltages. The offset control gives you the possibility to add or subtract a constant voltage to the output signal. 
For example, when used as a looping envelope, normally generating only positive voltages, you can add some negative offset and turn the looping envelope into a bipolar voltage. The two LEDs beneath these controls visualize the output voltage. These controls allow for detailed shaping of LFOs and envelopes generated by the module. But it also means that each of the four channels can be used as an independent offset generator, attenuator or inverter. If you'd like to learn more about why that's useful, have a look at this video. Looking back at the channels, each of them has four switches to set the channel's behavior. The first switch can lock the set max and minimum rise and fall times. So, if you like, you can use the four main control knobs to set a value for each single channel. The second switch sets the speed for that channel, either fast, medium or slow. So, even when multiple channels use the same rise and fall values, you can have them operate at different speeds. With the third switch, you can set the channel either in loop mode, becoming an oscillator or LFO, or in one-shot mode, to create triggered or gated envelopes. The final switch sets the channel in either slew or trigger mode. In trigger mode, whenever the module receives a high voltage, it will go through the full rise stage, and from there, if the input voltage is low, through the full fall stage, back to zero. So when you use an actual trigger, it puts out an attack decay envelope. But if you feed the channel a gate in this mode, it becomes an attack hold decay envelope. In slew mode, the module follows the value of the incoming voltage, but limits voltage changes according to the rise and fall times. So, if you feed the module a short trigger or short gate, the output is going up according to the set rise time, but as soon as the input goes back to zero, the output starts going down according to the set fall time, even if it didn't complete the full rise or fall stage. However, in this mode, you can also feed the channel a bipolar signal, like an audio signal, bipolar square wave LFO, or sample and hold signal. In this case, it will function as a slew limiter. Because each channel only has a single input that you can feed anything you like, from triggers and gates to audio and CV, setting the right combination between these switches is crucial to get the desired effect. Beside the main input and the main output at the bottom, there are three more outputs for each channel to increase the possibilities. There's a gate output, which outputs a gate on while in the rise part of the envelope. So, for example, in loop mode, this becomes a square wave LFO with variable pulse width. If you set the minimum and the maximum values with a large interval, it will become a random gate signal. There's an end of rise output, sending a short trigger every time the cycle reaches the end of a rise. And finally, an end of fall output, sending a trigger every time the cycle reaches the end of a fall stage. Finally, there are two outputs that combine the four channels. One is an average of all channel outputs, and one is the sum of all channel outputs. Let's start with a few simple patches to give you a feeling of the stochastic element and how to modulate it. Let's start with a simple trigger to the input in trigger mode, creating a simple attack decay envelope going to a VCA and filter in a melodic voice. With the max fall time at zero, you can set the decay manually with the minimum fall time. When increasing the max above the minimum, you introduce some random variation to the decay of the envelope. With something like a sine LFO to the minimum fall time, you can control the decay time with the LFO. But when you modulate the max fall time in this setup, you control the range in which randomization of the decay time is allowed. Similar tricks can be done in loop mode, creating an LFO. For example, set equal minimum rise and fall times to create a triangle LFO, influencing a filter in a drone voice. When you increase both the maximum times, you allow randomization in shape and frequency. But you can also change the shape in a more controlled manner. 
For example, when you multiply a bipolar triangle LFO and send a copy to each of the minimum, rise and fall times. Using the bipolar attenuators on each input, you can decide if you like to control the frequency of the LFO or the shape. Again, using that same LFO on the maximum values, you can create changes in the amount of randomization allowed in generating the LFO. And of course, these tricks can be used on bipolar voltages, like a sample and hold signal as well. For example, send a random voltage into the minimum value inputs to randomly morph between the stepped incoming signal and the slewed more smooth random version. If you feed a slow square wave LFO into the input and set both and rise fall parameters so a bit of randomization occurs, you create some random slew creating wave shaping on the LFO. The ADAC506 offers a lot of flexibility because each channel can be used independently. But it shines when they're all used together to create more organic movement in complex patches. Let's start with an example using the four channels in a single rhythmic voice. One channel is locked, fed a sample and hold signal and used as a slew limiter, folding the wave shape of an oscillator. Another channel is looping, also locked and panning the signal left and right. Then a clock is driving a clock divider, the faster division is triggering an envelope, opening the filter, and a slower division is changing another folding parameter on the oscillator. These two envelopes have a bit of randomization going on to create organic variations. A nice percussive setup is to use a sequencer to create multiple trigger patterns. One is triggering a 4 to the floor kick and four other patterns are used to trigger envelopes on the ADAC 506. Those envelopes are sent to VCAs, shaping the volume of other percussive sounds passing through them, like noise through a high pass filter, a tuned wavetable oscillator and a bass sound. And let's have a look at a more ambient setup. One channel is used as a clock, driving a clock divider. One division is driving a dual 8-step sequencer, turning two oscillators in simple voices. Two other divisions trigger envelopes on the ADAC. One envelope is opening a short plucky sound on a gate, and the other opens a VCA, allowing a fast modulation source to pass onto a filter in the second voice. The fourth channel is modulating an effect module. Then, the average mix output is used as a complex modulation source on the wave shape of an oscillator. And finally, a smooth random voltage is sent to both the max, rise and fall time to allow randomization to all four channels, including the one used as the master clock.
I can easily make a one hour video with patch ideas for function generators. But I wanted to share just a few non-common examples to get you started. When you use the slew function on faster signals, like audio signals or fast LFOs, increasing the rise and fall time act as a rudimentary filter or VCA. For example, let's send a sample into the input and set the rise and fall time so slow, the incoming signal is slewed so much, it's no longer audible. Now, when you send an envelope to both the rise and fall minimum and use the attenuators to invert the effect of the envelope, it will effectively reduce the slew amount until the incoming audio is passed on, creating a VCA-like effect. The extra gate and end of phase outputs allow for creative trigger and gate generation. Like I mentioned earlier, in loop mode, the gate output can be used as a square wave LFO with variable duty cycle. Or when randomization is allowed, random gates. When you feed a steady clock into the input in trigger mode, the end of rise trigger output can be used as a trigger delay. For example, when you use a steady clock to trigger a kick, you can use the trigger delay to trigger a high end and set a manual swing. In this setup, you can use the max rise value to create some subtle randomization if you like more organic wobbly beats. When you set the rise time above the speed of the incoming clock, you can set up a manual clock divider. For example, create a divide by 2 or 3. If you trigger a channel with an oscillator, a function generator can also be used as audio source or experimental sub-oscillator with wonky wave shaping effects. Let's just scratch the surface of that by using a mixer to mix the main oscillator with the output of the function generator and tweak some knobs by hand. Within a modular system, the uses for function generators are pretty much endless. So feel free to let me know your favorite tricks in the comments. And if you'd like to learn more about things like mixing, offset generators or clock dividers, have a look at any of these videos. And if you'd like to see more modular content from me, smash that like, subscribe and bell button. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.